Thanks for joining us today. We're going to have a conversation with NOV about how they've deployed AR and immersive reality on wearable devices to help their industrial workforce and talk a little bit about their customized application, Tracker Vision. My name is Charlie Nigoy. I'm the Senior Vice President of Customer Success at LibreStream. And I'm joined today by Katie Sasky from NOV and Rama Oraganti from Realware. Let's get into some background on each of our customers before we get into the formal session. So LibreStream has been a leader for over 18 years in industrial augmented reality. In fact, pioneered the space and were the first company to ever deploy a remote expert solution in the world. Um, our platform is scalable, it's globally deployed, it operates on any device, any network, anywhere. And our mission really has been unchanged those entire 18 years. And that is to deliver the right information to the right person at the moment they need it, no matter where they are in the world. And my team is especially dedicated to helping our customers transform their workforce, employ digital tools, not just in the carpeted spaces of their operations, but out in the industrial uh, operations of their business. Rama, you want to tell us a little bit about RealWare? Sure. Thank you, Charlie. Hello, everyone. I'm Rama Oragandi, and I'm the Chief Product Officer at RealWare. RealWare was founded in 2016, and our focus from the first day, from day one, has been on developing real solutions for real problems facing the industrial frontline workers. We are the global leader in industrial strength assisted reality and often have been called the gold standard by our customers. Realware offers three key products, HMT1, which is a IP66 ruggedized wearable, HMT1Z1, which is the only zone one intrinsically safe wearable computer that I know of, and Foresight Cloud, which is an integral tool that makes deploying and managing enterprise deployments easy, safe, and secure. Great. Thanks, Rama. Katie, you want to tell us a little bit about NOV? Yeah, absolutely. So I'm Katie Sasky, Director of Sales for Aftermarket Programs for our Rig Technologies Group. Um, a little bit about NOV. For over 150 years, we have pioneered innovations that empower the global energy industry, um, enabling our customers to safely produce abundant energy while minimizing their environmental impact now and in the future. Um, we are organized into three distinct business units. We have Rig Technologies, who builds and supports drilling solutions along with marine and construction equipment. That's the group I'm in. Um, we have Wellbore Technologies, who enhances drilling performance through their service and product offerings, mainly focusing on downhole tools. And then we have our CAPS group, or Completions and Production Solutions. Uh, this group serves well intervention service providers and oil and gas producers. Now, all three of these business units support the entire life cycle of their products. They do this through spares management, repair, equipment rentals, as well as technical support, field service, training, and remote equipment monitoring solutions. Great. Thanks, Katie. So great background on, on NOV. Um, let's get into a little bit more about uh, the specifics of, of Tracker Vision. So uh, can you tell us a little bit more about it? Yeah, so we've used track revision for both internal and external support in global land and offshore applications. And uh, most recently, we've had customers approaching us about recertification work that needed to be done on a work basket offshore. Utilizing our track revision um, system allows us to stream that real time audio and video back to our SMEs so that we could view what was happening in the field and provide those instructions to complete the commissioning procedures. Now, our remote presence was enough to give their customer, the operator, the proper documentation to allow that rig to continue operations. Um, another area that we've seen quite an increase in activity is rig automation. Um, there's been a shift in automation uh, operations, which is it's newer to our industry. And um, with that, we'll deploy our reflexive drilling system, Novos, and include Tracker Vision to help support. So we can see exactly what the driller is seeing while he is running our system and really reinforce those training efforts um, to help our system operate at its maximum potential. Not only that, but we can more efficiently support those customers through our technical support center. Um, 
This helps us to not lose time traveling to the rig, waiting on operations, or most recently having that quarantine time where we stand by and aren't able to actually support the customers. Katie, uh, I have a question for you. What led NOV to investigate a remote collaboration solution? Was there a specific event that drove this? Um, I'd say it was a kind of a, a combination of events. Initially, we wanted to use the technology to support our land customers. Um, what would happen was they would call our support center. They would explain a problem they were having on the rig. We would dispatch a technician based on their feedback. And what was happening is once we arrived on location, the problem was something completely different than what they explained or the way that we understood it. So before using tracker vision, we would have sent the technician home, dispatched a different tech to the service rig. Um, but now with tracker vision, we can connect to our SMEs and help troubleshoot that equipment the technician may not be familiar with. And you know, taking it a step further, we've actually shifted our, our entire business model and we enable our customers to now wear the headsets and contact us directly for remote troubleshooting, um, whether that's through our global support center, our repair center, or by utilizing our service technicians. Now, there are times where we'll still have to dispatch a technician to the rig, but by using tracker vision, we do have a more thorough understanding of the problem before we even leave home base. Great. Thank you, Katie. That's quite a compelling reason to use remote collaboration. Thank you. Can you talk uh, about the importance of implementing the HMT1 heads up display as part of the solution? Yeah, so first off, we really we needed a solution that would integrate into ours and our customers PPE so that they weren't having to take equipment on and off. And the HMT headsets easily clip into their own hard hats without affecting their line of sight. That was really important. Um, obviously, we work with very heavy duty equipment, so safety is always our top priority. Having a solution that is 100% voice activated was another big selling point for us. Um, our customers and our service technicians can now safely use both hands to perform tasks on location. Um, another thing is being able to move that display out of the way when it's not needed. If you picture yourself climbing up a 220 foot derrick swaying in the wind on a floater offshore, you do not want any distractions. Um, lastly, using the heads up display has really helped us with increasing our efficiencies. Um, our technicians no longer have to go back to their vehicles or to their offices to pull up drawings. You know, they have everything right there at their disposal right when they need it. So Katie, obviously you guys have deployed this in a lot of different places. Um, from your perspective, uh, what are the aspects of, of onsite that NOV has found most beneficial? That, that's a hard one to narrow down. Um, it has all been extremely beneficial. Um, you know, back in 2015, we did quite a few trials with different providers um, of software and equipment, but none of them really met those specific needs in our industry until we started working with both LibreStream and Realware. Um, but there are a few features that stand out. In certain scenarios, it's really not feasible to have someone wearing that headset for eight to 12 hours at a time streaming back to an office. So for us, it was a benefit to be able to show one screen to our customer and then have the ability to toggle views between the cube and the headset. Um, another big feature for us is the ability to optimize bandwidth. That, that's a huge advantage. Um, drilling rigs are not working in the middle of a metropolitan city with 5G connectivity. It's a very remote location and oftentimes they're having to share the network with multiple service providers. So being able to optimize the video and camera quality in low bandwidth situations was crucial for our success. A um, Couple other features that we use quite a bit, the annotation feature. So in real time, we are able to ensure that the user is tightening the correct bolt or cutting the correct wire by circling or pointing to that exact location um, through the viewfinder. And then lastly, the one we use quite a bit is um, sending and receiving pictures. Now with this solution, we don't have to take a picture, save it on a desktop folder, open another application, attach the picture, send it. it, it all of that process is just completely um, streamlined and we can immediately send and receive those files straight to the headset. And it's really helped us to save quite a bit of time here. Great to hear that, Katie. Uh, having gone through the trials in uh, 2015, 
What was your criteria then for selection? Um, and as you did that, did you have any surprising findings? So initially we started off with a set of glasses and it just did not suit our needs at all. It, it looked cool, but it just, it, it didn't work for what we needed. We needed something that was safe, easy to use and durable. Um, when working offshore near Well Center, it is a requirement to have a zone rated device. So that was first on our list. Um, and then when it comes to ease of use and durability, we have a saying that things need to be rough neck proof. If they can find a way to break it, they will. And so far these headsets have held up extremely well in the harsh environments that our customers operate in. Great. You know, it's easy to get excited about the technology side of things, but equally or more important, in fact, is the, the business side. So if you look at from the, the that perspective at NOV, what benefits have you have you guys seen from Tracker Vision? So when global operations really slowed down in 2020, we had that infrastructure in place to support our customers and it gave us a huge edge over our competition. Um, as they were shut down or fumbling through new technologies, we were able to seamlessly support them and keep operations going. Um, a big benefit has been the ability to save our customers time and travel expenses by offering some of our testing remotely using the headsets and the cube. So historically, we would have two to three customers travel from their home base to our repair facilities um, to witness a series of functions on a piece of equipment. And depending on where their home base was located, um, having the remote option saves anywhere from four to eight days, plus that lost time of being out of the office. Um, another benefit that we've seen is cross-divisional collaboration. I, I mentioned earlier that we're a huge company comprised of three business units, and at times our technologies do integrate with each other, but we aren't always able to perform that integration testing or the troubleshooting at the same time just due to scheduling conflicts. So using Tracker Vision has allowed us to expand our technicians' knowledge network even further into other business units, which was virtually impossible before. Now, having the remote SMEs is only one part of the toolbox, though. You know, the, the ability to empower not only ourselves, but our customers with the right information at the right time has helped increase um, our efficiencies and our accuracy. If you think about a technician who's working, you know, a, a 12 to 16 hour shift on the rig to do a job, a lot of times they don't have a, a pen and paper handy to document every task that they're doing having the ability to go back and review those videos and pictures in that richer detail has really helped us to increase the accuracy of our reporting that we're providing to our customers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Obviously the last 20 months have been challenging globally. And I think you used the word fumbling a little bit ago. Um, what kind of challenges did you guys encounter uh, with introducing this kind of technology to your workforce? You know, I, I bet, the, these challenges are probably similar in, in other industries as well, but it's, it's adoption, you know, with, with any new technology, it just, it takes time. You'll have those super users who love technology. They can't wait to use it and get their hands on it. And then you're going to have those more traditional folks who sit there and say, uh, uh, no way, not putting that thing on my head. You're crazy. So um, you, you, you've got to get those, those super users who help with the adoption. On the lines of adoption, um, we've struggled with our service personnel thinking that we were going to cannibalize their jobs and no longer offer those in-person service trips. And that couldn't have been further from reality. Once we took the time to demo usage cases with the technology, our FST started to see it as another tool that they can use and really the benefits of working smarter. It is very fascinating to me, the concept of getting people uh, used to new technology. So going back to your point on the more skeptical folks, was there a particular use case, uh, something specific that gave them the aha moment? To be completely honest, it was COVID. I mean, COVID pushed them to finally embrace the technology. You know, there was no way around it. The world and business as we knew it completely changed. Travel was suspended. You couldn't get in and out of countries. I mean, it was just a completely new world. Um, so back in January, we actually completed an FAT on serial number one of a new piece of equipment. Um, the customer was at their home in Houston. We had engineering supporting from Canada, 
Houston, Stavanger, and Christensen. And then the physical equipment was actually in Poland. Um, and this global collaboration proved internally and externally that business can continue without spending tens of thousands of dollars flying personnel to one location. You know, we use that remote collaboration technology before COVID, and we will continue to advance with it in the future. Right, that's quite interesting. Uh, thank you for sharing that. NOV has publicly talked about, uh, about how you have embraced emerging technologies to extend your competitive advantage. As you think about that, what criteria do you weigh as you consider what technologies you evaluate, first you evaluate, and then what technologies you eventually deploy? So I mentioned earlier that we're comprised of three business units, and because we service different customers, not every business unit has the same needs. But within Rig Technologies, first we look at what is the problem we're trying to solve, and is it actually in line with our customers' expectations? Then we look at the ease of use and intuitiveness. We want it to be easy to promote that adoption. Um, we'll take the early adopters, we'll let them test the technology to ensure that the behind the curve users will be able to grasp the technology also. Um, we're pretty lucky in that we have a fully operational land drilling rig at our Spring at Technology Center in Navasota, Texas, and we're able to test out our technologies there. So once we have a good grasp of it internally, we'll then look at which customers are innovators and early adopters, and we'll partner with them on trials before fully launching it into the open market. And having that, that test facility gives us real world usage that can sometimes be missed when you only focus on R&D in a lab type setting. So Katie, how do you see uh, going from where you are today uh, in deploying this kind of solution and where do you see that expanding uh, in the future within NOV? Yeah, so I mean, we're absolutely going to continue to pursue opportunities to make our operations more efficient with the technologies. Um, so far, we've focused pretty heavily on supporting our customers' operations in the field. But next steps are for us to really integrate the technologies into our own internal manufacturing practices. You know, we have a maintenance system which coupled with the on-site features and that Realware provides um, should be able to help increase productivity drastically. Um, this can help eliminate that back and forth of getting drawings, ordering parts, issuing internal POs, and, and so forth. So we've started sharing those lessons learned with the other business units, and I, I truly see this expanding into their operations at some point as well. Great. Great, thanks. Thanks for that. Well, Katie, this has been great, and and we certainly appreciate all your uh, your comments and all that you shared, and uh, you know answering questions with with Rama and I. Um, so thank you for that, and thank you for the the continuing engagement with both LibreStream and Realware. Um, at this point, why don't we move to a, a Q and A session? So those of you in the audience, please uh, go ahead and reach out uh, via the chat to ask questions of Katie or of me or of Rama. <laughs> 